Ladies and gentlemen in the United States and the Republic of Korea, welcome to a great webinar series about Korean defense veterans. The Korea Defense Veterans Association, or KDDA, is very thankful and proud to partner with the U.S. Non-Commissioned Officers Association, or NCOA. I am Colonel Retired Steve Lee, the Senior Vice President of KDDA. I would like to provide short opening comments before reintroducing our moderator, Command Sergeant Major Retired Troy Welch, the former Command Sergeant Major of United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and U.S. Forces Korea. Sergeant Major Welch will lead a discussion with our panelists, Ms. Felicia Allman, joining us from Korea, Mr. Kim Jong Wook, also in Korea, Lieutenant Anna Rule in Florida, and Sergeant Major Retired Joe Terry in Texas. Then we will open the floor for Q&A with our audience members. You can submit your questions at any time using the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. You can do this even before the Q&A session starts. Please keep the sh questions short and relevant to our discussion. This webinar will be available on the kdba.vet digital library and the KDBA YouTube channel later today. Also, KDBA is accepting applications for its internship program. This is a great opportunity for anyone to get involved in an internship that is very flexible and mostly done virtually. For information, including our webinar about the internship program and to apply by September 25th, please go to kdba.vet slash internships. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our moderator. Command Sergeant Major Retired Troy Welch enlisted in the U.S. Army in June 1977 as a food service specialist. He served in every leadership position from first cook, shift leader, platoon sergeant, first sergeant to Command Sergeant Major. After serving 30 years, Command Sergeant Major Welch retired in July 2007. His last tours of duty in, included Command Sergeant Major of United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, U.S. Forces Korea, and 8th United States Army. Very, very busy. And he has the distinction of being the first Sergeant Major of the G4 staff at the U.S. Army Headquarters. Command Sergeant Major Welch is also the first food service specialist to serve as Command Sergeant Major at the Major Command or Four Star level. He was inducted into the U.S. Army Quartermaster Hall of Fame. He is currently the Director of Non-Commissioned Officer and Soldier Programs in the Association of the U.S. Army or AUSA. He lives in Colonial Heights with his wife, Deborah. They have five children and five grandchildren. <laughs> we are very grateful that he volunteers as a board member in KDBA. So ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Major Welch. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And I have one caveat. I am now a great grandfather. I'm too young, I'm too young to be a great grandfather. <laughs> well, thank you, sir, for the introduction and helping to organize this webinar. Uh, KDVA and NCOA are very excited to host this webinar because we believe the stories of our Korean defense veterans and their families are a very essential part of the story of the Rock and U.S. Alliance. These veterans and their families have served in Korea since the signing of the Armistice Agreement on July 27, 1953, quite a long time, to defend South Korea against North Korea threats and attacks. They have helped South Korea develop into a world leader, earning the gratitude of millions of South Korean people. Today's webinar is the first in a series about, this incredible, about these incredible people. They've served starting in 1977 to 2019. In future webinars, we will talk to veterans of the Defense Military as I, Defense Military as I Zone or the DMZ. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Those service members who served on the front lines of defense of Korea. In today's webinar, we will cover three main topic areas. We provide Korean defense veterans and their families an opportunity to talk about their assignments in Korea. We will raise awareness about the, their vital role, irreplaceable mission in Korea. And we will discuss Korea, if Korea, truly is an assignment of choice. Um, I vote yes. And I am thrilled that we are able to bring such a diverse and experienced group of people who served over a 42 year span. Uh, I'm gonna take a few minutes if you don't mind and introduce each panel member and we'll read a little of their short bio and to give you a better understanding of who they are. Um, so welcome, Mr. Kim John wook He is the chairman em emeritus of the Katusa Veterans Association and the CEO of Swissport Korea. 
From 1977 to 1979, Mr. Kim started his professional career as a Korean augmentee to the U.S. Army, or as we, as we lovingly call them, Katusas, a program like none other in the world that was started by General MacArthur. That gave him the opportunity to learn more about the Americans and the U.S. forces in Korea. That also started a lifelong passion and commitment to the Iraq U.S. Alliance. And Mr. Kim has done great work throughout his career as the CEO of four companies, Busy Man, and organizations, and has an advisor board member of three organizations to, to, to include KDVA. We are very thankful for his senior leadership at KDVA, and I truly have enjoyed working with him as a fellow board member. And we move on to a dear friend, uh, Sergeant Major Joe Terry. He's the ex executive director of NCOA. And there are many people who will tell you that about Joe, that he is a true friend for everybody. Because Joe is a humble man of great integrity and selfless service, he also has a love and deep commitment to Korea. Joe served in Korea for the final nine years of his Army career, and then served 12 more years as a consultant in Korea. He's married, I'm, I'm not sure how he did this, but he managed to get out of Korea. He is married with one, with one daughter, and they are now in San Antonio, Texas. KDVA is thankful for Joe to help him get the partnership between NCOA and KDA, KDA staff off to a great start. Ms. Felicia Allman is an Army spouse, thank you for your service, an educational <laughs> professional. She was born in Georgia and has taught in schools all over the United States, Germany, and Korea. She spent the past 12 years in the DOD school system as a teacher, administration leader. She's a wonderful role model of a military spouse who is truly a wonderful family, is a, is a successful per, professional, and has become a community leader. With her husband, Michael, who retired in the Army in 2011, thank you for his service, they founded and are pastors of the Christ is Life International Church and Ministries in Korea. Good for you. We are thankful that she could be with us today. And we have Air Force Lieutenant Ann Rue. Now, LT, we won't hold against you that you're Air Force. Um, but we appreciate you being there. She is from Tampa, Florida, and enlisted in the Air Force in 2011 as an intelligence analyst. She served in Korea from 2016 to 2019 in USFK J2, I'm sorry, as a watch officer. And because she was, also, she was so well respected, Anna was selected as the assistant executive officer to the UNC Chief of Staff. I'm really sorry. Along the way, she earned not just her bachelor's degree, but also a master's of education from Liberty University. In less than two years, she got commissioned as an intel officer with her husband, Christian, and welcomed their son, Odin. Congratulations. We look forward to hearing about her experiences, including her love, <laughs> we all love this, Korean barbecue. So let's kick it off. Speaking of which, Anna, having only left Korea a year ago, can you share with our, view with our viewers out there, what do you miss about Korea? Sure. Thanks, sir, for the, the intro. And uh, yeah, don't hold it against me that uh, I'm in the Air Force. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I had a wonderful time in Korea. Besides the barbecue, it's kind of obvious that the food's amazing and um, getting to experience that with um, with my husband and making all the friends that I did and the, the experiences, the friendships and the relationships, both personally and professional that I made are what I value and miss most um, about Korea. I was fortunate to live at Yongsan for two years. Um, near Myeongdong, and then I transitioned with USFK down to Camp Humphrey, so got to live in the big city and in the countryside, so I got to see a lot and experience a lot, but I'd say at the end of the day, I miss my my friendships and the relationships I made. Yeah, you truly make friendship for life, don't you? That's, I think that's what they say over there. You meet you meet a Korean, whether it be a, a former military member or just a, just a civilian in the community, you, yes, meet, you, have a, you have a friend for life. Did you get to travel much? What oh. road did? Oh yeah, so I was there for three years um, and my husband was there for about two years of that. Uh, so we, we got to explore a lot of Asia. Well, we went to the Olympics in Korea. We went to uh -huh. Jeju, we traveled the whole peninsula and we also got off peninsula. We went to Japan and Tokyo, Taiwan, China. We did a little bit of everything. And that's why I'd love to go back is because there's still so much that you know I, I didn't get to see in a three year tour. I think I could do another three there. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Joe, now you've been in Korea most of your life. Um, what do you miss about Korea? 
Well, I have to tell you, I, by, by what the lieutenant said, I mean, it's just a camaraderie. I mean, it's, as you said, even though I'm, uh, I was, I'm, I'm older than, than I look, uh, I was, <laughs> I spent a lot of my time in Korea, longer in, in Korea than I spent actually uh, in the United States before. I mean, I left home at 18 years old, so I spent uh, a longer time in Korea than in my hometown. So I miss a lot of the people there from the military through the civilians because in, in, in particularly since I you know, spent my last nine and a half years on active duty, so I had an opportunity to work with uh, US service members as well as Korean Rock and Katusas. And then as a civilian in, in the NCOA and working out and also uh, enjoying the community and working with community leaders and working with different schools and orphanages there in Korea. So I, I miss a lot of, of Korea. I missed the Dragon Hill Lodge. I spent a lot of time in the Dragon Hill Lodge. 40 days when I initially got there and over 30 days in the hotel on the way out. Uh, my office was there the last year and a half that I was there as well. And spent a lot of, had a lot of uh, events there in the Dragon Hill Lodge as well. And I got to say, I missed the uh, Incheon Airport. It is by far the best airport in the world. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I love it. There, but I can't say I missed a barbecue because I'm fortunate enough to be, be married to a, to a young Korean lady and I get plenty of barbecue and rice and kimchi and bagogi. <laughs> yeah, you have to rub that in, Joe. <laughs> yeah, for our listeners out there, if you don't know what the Dragon Hill Lodge is, it, it, it is, um, well, it's the Halakoa of Korea, right? Uh, mm -hmm. If you've ever been to Hawaii, right? It's a, it's a wonderful place and I, I have to echo Joe's comments. It's a, uh, what a great place to do R and R if you ever get over to Korea, uh, Mr. Kim. I'm going to shift over to you, sir. Uh, you have the longest connection to Korea in the Rock U.S. Alliance. Could you talk about your experiences as a Katusa? Thank you, Troy. Actually, I'm very you know happy to work with you as a board member of KDBA. And uh, frankly speaking, you know, well, I can say that my whole life uh, I cannot be explained without my Katusa period. I could not have achieved what I have done, you know, so far without Katusa experience. I learned actually English and computer skills back in the late 1970s at Division Data Center, a second infantry division, U.S. Army. And I met many of Katusa and American friends during my service period and the various new experience with the friends during this period, actually. This experience was, uh, ex is, and, the, and the memories uh, have motivated me to be uh, you know, successful as one of the, my uh, business leaders and who have a you know, global perspective. And then that is also one of the reasons I could, I could successfully, you know, that forming my CEO position of Sales for Korea is, is under the, my age. My age is, is already 65, but still I'm, I'm, I'm holding the CEO position of Sales for Korea. That was because of, uh, you know, a big impact on, on my, you know, my the, uh, military, you know, the, 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 the experience at the second infantry division. The point actually let me go around the world and expand the field of my life and uh, my business and enlarge my social network too. I still think that the Kutusa period made the most of my life and I've been living with thankful mind for that actually. So I have lived with, uh, <clears throat> So that I have an obligation to give something back to my society as one of the both the social leaders and the former Ketusa soldiers. During my Ketusa period, and I was educated about Rock US Alliance, and this concept that I learned that time remain, remains in my mind already. And since that time, I thought it would be great if there would be an opportunity for me to contribute to the Alliance somehow. And I'm very much proud of being served as Kutusa, especially as second infantry division and became a member of famous 2ID association. <laughs> Thanks again, Troy. And then, uh, you know, the inv inviting me as panelists on this important webinar. I'll never forget Kutusa period, Kutusa service period. And this is a great, great chance for me to you know, pay back to my you know, the, the, the contribution back to the uh, in Rock US alliances. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Kim. Um, Mr. Kim, uh, with the help of Joe Terry, we created a thing called um, 
uh, the General Peck signed the upper ward there for the Catoosas uh, back when, when he and I were both stationed there. Is mm -hmm. that program still alive and going well? And what did you think of that program uh, that, for the Catoosas Uh That is a great program because at the moment there's still, you know, that is going on. And also we add another one, you know, you know, Step Southern Kim Sang Won Award, which is we call it in Hall of Fame of Eight Army, uh, which is our prime minister. I mean, and former prime minister now actually the, the leader of the ruling parties, Mr. Lee Nam Yeon. He was also former Katusa, and he's he was actually inducted in uh, in a Hall of Fame, which is uh, you know Step Sergeant you know Shin Kim Sang. Kim, Step Sergeant Kim Sang was uh, you know uh, the Korean War veterans who has you know the the serve, silver star you know the the medal from uh, U U.S. Army, mm. and uh, you know for. We have we tried to add some more, you know, the uh, program, you know, to to uh, you know, award, you know, the, the, the to to enhance the to the program in the future. Then. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So Felicia, you're now in Korea, so it's good evening over there for you. And you've had you've got quite the unique background. So let me go back to 2008 when you're. Th what were your thoughts when you found out that you were going to Korea? Well, first, thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity to um, be with you all and be on this panel this evening for me, morning um, in the United States. Um, I will tell you that when my husband told me back in 2008 about this opportunity to come here, I was teaching middle school math in York County, Williamsburg, Virginia, and my phone rang and um, I, I said, are you okay? He said, um, I just got a phone call saying we need to move. And I said, okay, where? And he gave, gave me the options. And one of those options, of course, was here in Korea. And I said to him, I said, do you remember what I told you back in 2001 when you went to Korea the second time? I was not able to go that time because I was pregnant with our son. Um, and I was not able to go. He was stationed in Yongin. I was not able to go. Um, and so he said, yes, I remember you said that if I get an opportunity to go back to Korea that you want, to, you want to go the next time. So I told him, I said, I want to go. And he said, are you sure? Um, we just bought a house in Williamsburg, Virginia. He was stationed at Fort Monroe, which is now closed because it's like a historical site there in the Hamptons Rose area. And you, looks like you can maybe progress in your career here in your school district. And then we'll have to pull our son. He was kindergarten going to the first grade. He was first grade at that time in James City County. And so I said, I would love to go. Um, if we can get that opportunity, call Branch and say, we'll take it. So he called them. Of course, they're like, sure, let's, yeah, we can, you, you, we can get you there. So he called me back and he said, okay, I'm locked in. I'm now gonna apply for command sponsorship. So he applied for command sponsorship, got that right away. And I said, well, okay, I will, you know, apply to teach for, for Dodia. I am not only a product of Dodia, my father, he retired years ago. May he rest in peace. He retired as a reenlistment NCO. Um, so I grew up in Germany. And then years later, I went back to Germany to teach in Schweinfurt, which is now closed. So it was my way of giving back. So when this opportunity came, I said, hey, I think, I think it'd be wonderful wonderful opportunity. So I applied and I was able to teach fifth grade at Seoul American Elementary. So I was ecstatic. So the long, the, 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 your answer, the question that you're, the answer you're looking for, I was very ecstatic and excited to be able to come here to this wonderful country. Well, that's great. You know, I, when I got told I was going to go to Korea, we were in Hawaii. And so my wife tells people that when you walking down the ramp to the gate and you see those scratch marks along the walls, <laughs> those belong to her. But having got there, after she got there, I mean, you know, she fell in love with it. I mean, yes. so yeah, it, it, it truly was a wonderful experience. So you've yes. done quite a bit since you've been in Korea. So, what about, I mean, how, how were you able to accomplish so much? And still accomplishing quite a bit. 
Well, um, so the original plan was just to do two years here and to go back to the States and then retire because we still do own our home in Williamsburg, Virginia. Matter of fact, we're up the street by the um, outlets. So it's a good oh, yeah, area. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good area. Um, but we um, said, hey, well, let's, let's extend one more year. And that was when AIP was kind of popular. Uh -huh. So we AIP'd. Um, I had my daughter which is another reason why Korea is a, has a special place in my heart because I ran into a complication. So went to one hospital, was not able to um, help me deliver my daughter. So went over to Seoul National University Hospital and um, they were able to um, deliver my daughter. So my Korean friends say she is Korean. So and she's 10, she'll be 11 in February. Um, but for me to answer your question, just not being afraid, um, just not, having fear because some people I have, you know, I've, I've spoken with since I've been here for a little while, they, well, I don't want to do that. I'll just, I'll just stay on post. Well, we're here in a foreign country. You can always have a, take that, take advantage of the wonderful opportunity to, you know, um, continue to build upon those partnerships that we have, right. get involved with those um, programs, you know, um, between off post and on post, um, go see, you know, your local sites, and like Anna, I, I lived in Yongsan for 10 years. And then I've been now, I'm down here now in Camp Humphreys. This is a little over two years. So, you know, get on the train and go, go to the, you know, the War Museum, the Children's Museum, um, go to Namsan, you know, go to see the tower. Just those, it's, it's so much to do in Seoul. So basically just not being afraid, you know, taking that risk, not, not being afraid to take a risk. Um, go see traditional, go see the sites, the dance. It's just so much you can do here. So um, for me, that's what happened. I just, you know, I'll just, whenever someone said, hey, who wants to volunteer to um, go participate with this, with, you know, children on, on, you know, in the school system, and then, um, you know, children that's in the public school system outside of the, outside of the base, sure, I'll do that. And I also had a student teacher from Seoul National University. Um, that was very uncommon. Many, many of the teachers said, that's not common, Felicity. I'm like, well, I, I've never experienced that before. I wanna, I wanna know what they're teaching their future teachers. And then I wanna share with her what we're being taught in university in, you know, in the United States. Sure. So it was a wonderful opportunity for me to be like a mentor teacher to her. And then she learned some things like some strategies that we use in the classroom with our students. So again, just not being afraid, just, you know, continue to um, build upon those partnerships or even create new ones. So for me, that's really been the door opener for me. And then in, in reference to church, we, we have some uh, members of the church. They, they live right here in Piontech. They're, they're local um, nationals. And, um, Hello. Okay, I'm sorry. And <laughs> they've been here for a while, and so they've been trying to. It's it's just a it's just a partnership, and so not to be afraid, just yeah. not to be afraid. Yeah, I found that uh, as well as wherever you go, no matter where you're at, you know, if, if you're not afraid to get out and experience your community, um, if you stay on the base, then you're missing out on quite a bit, and it opens up a whole lot of opportunities. And I would tell you, Joe, same question to you, because I know that during your tenure there, um, having served a lot of that with you, I know you have accomplished a lot. And you were key in helping, you know, getting some of those soldiers and Katusas, you know, off the installation and out to experience Korea, because you, uh, NCOA, sponsored quite a bit. Um, so same question to you. You know, what, what allowed you to do that? You're on, uh, Joe, you're on mute, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I got you now. Yeah, I have an open mind. I, my, uh, we actually volunteered to come to Korea. I, I had, uh, you know, my wife obviously had been, family had been, you know, for lack of better terms, been, you know, rolling along with me wherever I wanted to go and needed to go as far as the military was concerned. So Korea was was actually my family's assignment. My, my They wanted to come career. As I mentioned, my wife's career and she wanted to get back home. So I volunteered and was fortunate enough to get back, to get there. And then also to, uh, 
become command sponsored because that was part of the part of the deal. You go, it was going to be command sponsored, or even if I wasn't command sponsored, they were going to come anyway. So fortunate enough to be command sponsored, uh, but came with open eyes, not really knowing what to expect. To be quite honest with you, and when I arrived, uh, my predecessor had already departed. He had to have some emergency surgery and go back to the United States. So. I went into the position not really knowing, you know, what what it was I, I needed to do initially, other than I'm, you know, I'm a sergeant major, so yeah, I, I know what needs to be done. However, you know, knowing the culture of the of the assignment, but uh, just having an open mind about what was going on, and, and, and like you both have, have mentioned, is that uh, you know, reaching out, learning about the uh, the community of where where we were, not being afraid to ask questions about uh, things that, that I wanted to know about, and also at the same time, obviously, in the forefront of my mind is, is asking questions for my service members and from them about what they thought was the assignment was about and what they were, you know, thought would, would enhance the, uh, the assignment. Because when I got there in 1996, obviously, a lot of the quality of life things that are there now were not in place. So I think as, as things have evolved in, in the command and in the focus has been not only, you know, fight tonight, which is very important, but at the same time, you want to be sure that your family members are taken care of while you're focusing on your mission. And then for those service members out there, particularly the single soldiers that and uh, service members that they keep themselves gainfully employed and doing some positive things when they're not in the motor pool and on those tanks and doing those kind of training drills. So I think that that helped a lot. And and I know it now with the technology and everything, it's just a lot different. So service members and families know a lot. A, a lot more about what's going on in, the, in Korea than a lot of service members didn't know years before. And I think that was why a lot of them were intimidated about going. They, they just, it was just so much unknown about it. And there were several service members, unfortunately, that had been there years before that had the sense of mind that Korea was the same as what it was when they were there. And that's definitely far from the truth. So. So I think uh, just us growing up there and keeping an open mind and open heart, and, and like you all said, being engaged in what's going on around you and being a part of it, and what made what made things real good for us. Yeah, I know you're very uh, exactly right. It's not. Uh, I used to tell folks when we go back to the states and talk at uh, at the academy. It's it's not your grandfather's Korea, right? And and that's so. And honestly, so that's what a lot of people envision. You know. Um, so uh, shifted to you, uh, Lieutenant Rue, now I was kidding you earlier. Um, to, you must have, uh, it speaks volumes to your knowledge, skills, and attributes to be able to be selected to uh, be on the, on the staff there. Um, what about your time in Korea? Uh, what was it that achieved, helped you achieve uh, the successes that you had allowed you to do, do so much? Yes, sir, that's a, that's a good question. I uh, feel like a lot of, uh, my success has been uh, good timing and uh, just working really hard. Um, I was fortunate enough to be selected to be on a general staff uh, while I was in Korea. So I got to pivot out of a uh, traditional intel assignment into more of a career broadening, um, career broadening role for most of my time there. Um, and uh, with that, I think, uh, well, because of that, I got to see a lot more than what a traditional NCO would get to see in their role. I was, a, I was an E6 while I was in Korea. Um, and so I think that, that opened my eyes to a lot to get to see things at the, the bird's eye view um, from the headquarters level. And so just to experience that and get to live and breathe that every day as a junior NCO really uh, opened my aperture of what I was capable of and what I was responsible for every single day. Um, definitely the biggest role I've had yet um, to date. Um, and, and because of that, because I did work hard, um, I was rewarded my, well, I still had to apply for officer school. My, uh, the general I worked for, he, he helped me do that. He wrote a very nice recommendation letter. Um, he'll tell you he only did a little bit of the work and I did the rest, but um, I truly think the, besides, uh, just the experience I got set me apart from the rest of my peers. And that's why I was selected um, for officer school. And um, now I'm uh, at my first assignment as an, an, as an Intel officer. Um, 
I just finished up Intel school this past year in Texas. So I just arrived in Florida, but I, I'd like to think that Korea was the, the game changer for my entire career. I did not see myself. I, did, I had no idea where Korea was going to take me, um, but I, I'm very happy with, with, where I, with where I ended up. So. Well, congratulations and good for you. Okay. Um, I would tell you, uh, and everybody on this panel could, could attest that Korea was a stepping stone for a lot of people. Um, and I'll share a story a little later on about what, how it was a stepping stone for me. I mean, I was a cook, you know, a food service guy, being the command sergeant major of, uh, of those positions in Korea. Um, yeah, it changed my life. So I, I can appreciate what you just said. Um, Mr. Kim, mm -hmm. uh, how you have had such an incredible and successful career in several fields. <laughs> now, what has been some of your leadership principles and were any of them connected to your experiences that you uh, received uh, during your time as a Katusa? Well, you know, I, I think that my principle of the leadership is the very simple. It's a build up the so and very proactive, you know, social network. You know, the, I like to actually use the, uh, the you know, typical example, which I have done for this Kutusa and KDBA and KUSA. Kutusa, you know, the uh, veterans uh, formed, you know, the SNS, uh, you know, the, the uh, organization back in uh, uh, 2010, I think. I took over uh, the lead of this SNS group. Uh, it's about 600, 700, you know, you know former Kutusa was joined this program. I took over in 2011, I took over this organization to, as a leaders. And uh, 2013, actually, I, I increased a number of Katusa veterans up to this, you know, uh, three, over 3,000, you know, the, the uh, former Katusa joined this, uh, you know, the uh, group. And uh, I developed it, did, uh, you know, to register as, you know, the, the non-government office, I mean, the organization, you know, register at the midst of uh, foreign affairs. And then actually becoming, you know, more and more people now joining us is about, we are talking about 12,000, you know, the, the uh, former Kutusa is now being, uh, you know, the registered as, as, as Kutusa Veterans Association. So this one is actually a good example that, uh, you know, if you know people, the better. And if you actually, you proactively approach the people who used to be, you know, the, uh, you know, comrade when you have actually in the same, uh, you know, the military, uh, in a program, then it will be very unique, you know, to uh, develop the old organization. That was actually giving me a lot of insight, you know, to, uh, you know, to apply the same concept into the, my, 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 you know, pro I mean, the, the, the business, uh, you know, the, the model too. You know? that, that makes me a really, you know, big uh, impact on it. So thanks, thanks for that, you know. I could join uh, this, the, the foundation of the CUSAP. I, I could join this foundation of the, the KDVA. And then now actually all I have joined this group is, is now getting bigger and bigger. It's, it's contributing, you know, the, the our alliance, uh, Rock BS Alliance is stronger now. It's, I'm very much proud of being, you know, my, my past 10 years, uh, my performance on, on this, like in private sectors and also military sectors, and they put it together. And this is, uh, I'm very proud of being, being, you know, part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. That's great. You've done quite a bit. and. Um... Uh, you, you, you've done the Katusa program proud. As I, I, I met, um, I met, I went back to Korea a couple times last year, one for the 75th anniversary of 8th Army, and you run across some folks that you met, and uh, they're all doing great and wonderful, and, and, and all of them are involved with KDBA in some way, shape, or form um, to try to improve that Rock US alliance. Um, I just want to shoot out a reminder to our listening audience. Um, down the tab below. If you have a question, please uh, post it, and we'll and we'll we'll be happy to, to answer your question. Um, so I have one I have one last question um, before we do go to the audience, and that's to talk about. I'd like to talk to each of you about why do you think there's a reluctance or hesitancy from some U.S. service members and family members about coming to Korea, and is Korea an assignment of choice or is slogan or is it the real truth? Now, I have my own opinion on that, um, but Joe, let's go to you first. I, I definitely believe that it is an assignment of choice. 
Now, if you would have asked me that in 1996, I probably could tell you something different. But a lot of a lot of it was again because of the the, the unknown that was there, and a lot of the quality of life was obviously taking place since that time up to date. So that made a difference. So it's definitely a, an assignment of your choice. And but I think there's the key points parts to that is first of all, those individuals that are there coming back when they leave Korea and come back to the United States, you know, I encourage them, and I know many of them are doing it already, is to to share their stories. You know, and a lot of times we are so quick to 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 tell the bad things that happen in an on assignment and not so much the good parts of the assignment. So I would ask uh, that those that do go to come back and share those goods as well as the bad parts of their experiences. And also for those that are there, if you see some things that may need some improvement here and there, because there's no perfect place anywhere that you go, then voice your opinions and your recommendations to your chain of command. There is no doubt that they will listen. I mean, when I, and Troy, you can mm -hmm. attest to this as well. When we came in, if, you, if it was an issue to you, that meant you didn't need it. So you didn't ask the question about anything you may need or what you thought. That's obviously has changed and the command has listened. And so they have made things tremendously better as far as the quality of life for our service members and our families there. But we need to share that story. And I am with uh, sponsorship is key. If, you know, that sponsor should be someone that's positive, upbeat, and again, not necessarily tell you everything that's uh, this, this, this peachy creams, but tell you what's, some, you know, what's good, bad, ugly, and answer your questions on what you need as far as if you're coming in as, as a, uh, a single service member and or with a family member. So sponsorship's key. So I, I, would, I would encourage you know, the units out there, and I'm sure they're doing it already, is to ensure you employ those individuals that are coming to Korea with a good sponsor, and with technology, as I mentioned earlier today, you can you can always go online and find out a lot of things, but nothing like an individual that's on the ground that can tell you about the assignment and what's going on in their community. So uh, definitely, again, the end, uh, it is an assignment of choice. Well, you, you brought up one point there about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, if you don't, if you don't talk about those issues, then they don't get addressed. Um, it's just like, you know, uh, if you ignore a standard, then the standard doesn't exist. You know, that's kind of the best way I could, could compare that. So, and you're right, every assignment has its downfalls, um, but when you talk about them, it's just what makes it much, much better. And I think that's what happened throughout time in Korea is, you know, the more you talk about it, the more it gets addressed and the command listens and now look at what Korea is today. I didn't recognize Camp Humphreys when I went back to it. Um, so uh, I, I totally agree. Uh, and, and also um, share your experiences about what, what is good about it. Because if you don't, um, uh, you'll never, you'll miss out on something when I, you know, the, 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 the best kept secret in the army, right? <laughs> and, that, and, and to me, that is Korea. Felicia, over to you. What are your thoughts, please? So to continue with what both of you have said, I have to agree. Um, from a spouse perspective, I do believe it's also an assignment of choice. I also believe you need to sh share your experiences um, as a spouse, you know, link up with other military spouses, and then we help those who are coming be behind us. I am now a retired Army spouse, but I still also um, allow the other spouses who are in our community here in Humphreys who are married to active duty service members say, hey, I've, I've been where you're, where you're going, so um, I'm here to help, but I do believe it is a assignment of choice. And the relevancy comes in, I do believe, when people um, pass on false information um, and they're basically repeating what they have heard someone else say, so they have not read about it or researched it on their own. And so again, I believe that's where the relevancy comes in, just by repeating or restating what something that someone else has said and it's not even true. <laughs> oh, no, you're exactly right. Um, again, I have a whole story about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, having spent uh, five years in Korea and, and 10 months of deployments there, believe me, I, I, I think I probably, I don't say I've heard it all, but I've heard a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, and hopefully we'll have time, I'll share that with you. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, Lieutenant Rue, over to you, please. What are your What are your thoughts? Is it a slogan or is it the real truth? And 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 how do we convince people that it is the truth? Yes, sir. Uh, I think that while Korea was an assignment of choice for for myself and my family. I think every airman, soldier, sailor, marine, everyone who's out there, they have to want to be there. I think I got to experience Korea kind of twofold. I got to live in uh, in Seoul with my spouse um, in an apartment. Um, you know, I was living the life um, in Seoul. And then I also got to experience Korea by myself down in Camp Humphrey. So I've lived that singer, single airman and also that command sponsorship. I've lived both. Um, so I think a lot of times it's easy for our active duty members to to feel alone that they're in a new place. It's it's unfamiliar. Their family's not there. Um, and if and if you want trouble, you you can find it. You know we've all seen the the bars at, at outside Osan and and Kunsan and and in Seoul. And so I think a lot of people um, they don't make the best of it. Um, they don't reach out. Um, and that's unfortunate because I really do. I love Korea and I love the time I got to spend there. Um, but I think it has to be the assignment that, um, that, that your choice for yourself. I don't think everyone, I've met a ton of people that were apprehensive when they first got there, mm -hmm. but then, you know, you just drag them out for, you know, for a beer and some barbecue and you have a great time. And then, you know, within a couple of weeks, they're like, wow, I really do appreciate this, this opportunity and, and to be here. So while at first it may not be for everyone, I think most people generally, um, warm up to it um but yeah and then the command sponsorship is key if you have the opportunity to take your family to overseas that was a goal of my husband and i's after he separated from active duty himself he wanted once i had the opportunity to go overseas we we took it i think that there's challenges there for for families um as well the logistical pieces and you know every day from diapers to groceries just learning learning a new country, um, that, that's always going to present itself. But I think the, the reward was always was worth, was worth it at the end. I wouldn't, I would do it again. I'll leave it at that. There you go. That's what I was waiting to hear. <laughs> <laughs> when you tell somebody you'd go back, that says a lot. So I appreciate you, your, your comments. Yes, of course. Mr. Kim. <laughs> Uh, what would you tell anybody who uh, may have concerns about being stationed in Korea? Uh, you, you've done a lot. You've been there your whole life. What would you, what would you say? Oh, yeah. I believe, you know, some family members may hesitate to come to the Korea because Korea is still, they thought, they thought Korea is still, you know, in the middle of war because we had armistice and technically. And right? North Korea is right above the south. And there have been several sudden military actions by North Korea that badly affected the peace on the Korean Peninsula. Well, I think I also have to admit that uh, Korea is still not well known to the U.S. public somehow. And some family members, you know, seems to be to believe that Korea is a bit dangerous place to go, and there might be a few things to do during their assignment in Korea. Then in Germany, this is one of the, I figure out that, uh, you know, something going on there. But I think I'd like to tell them about this. You know, Korea is the best choice who seeks unique experience and want to make close friends in the Oriental countries. I firmly believe, you know, the working with uh, foreign military is one of the unique experience for them. As I uh, you know, mentioned earlier, you know, Kutusa program is unique. And Kutusa is actually well trained. They are, you know, really a top class. One percent of all total our, you know, the 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 populations. And they are very smart enough to take care of all the US, yes, you know, the the newcomers over here. So, I mean, Kutusa program is very unique. There is no similar program. Other, they don't have Germany like this kind of system. It's only in Korea. And Kutusas are Korean, but wear the same uniform and achieve the same mission. You know. The, you know, in, in the same unit with the U.S. service members, they, are, they, they can tie it up really very closely, you know. So experiencing this unique program might give them a broader insight into the foreign, you know, the, 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 and the military affairs at the at the same time. In Kutusa, are your comrade, you know, and will will be a big supporter of, of, of them, I think. And I think we, they can actually, I, I, I think newcomer doesn't know about Kutusa. Kutusa, what, what is Kutusa, right? Yeah. 
So we have to actually let them understand what is Katusha's role of it, not only for military support, but also for, uh, you know, for the family support us too. Because, you know, Katusha also has the same, I mean, family in Korea. I mean, they can get each, I mean, our, you know, Katusha Veterans Association tried to promote this kind of, uh, you know, the, the family getting, you know, gathering, you know, together, this is very aggressive, you know. So, uh, besides in Korea, it's, it's one of the developing country too, you know. And, and I also become one of the leading countries in the economics and politics. They, they can see it on, on, on their own eye, I believe. The experience in Korea would give family members insight about how Korea made, you know, this country developed so fast. They can see that all this kind of, you know, from the 1950 up to the 90, 2020s. So uh, I think, you know, the, there's a lot of things to do in Korea. And maybe much, much, you know, the more than I think in Germany or somewhere else. So, uh, I mean, also, you know, the Camp Humphrey is, is uh, the, the, the biggest, uh, you know, the, the military compound in, in overseas. And then on top of it, the biggest PX in the, you know, the, the, or the Asia Pacific regions. This is a good choice for them, I believe. Yes. <laughs> so um, I probably introduced Korea as a great assignment for in newcomers. I think that they have to advertise and this, this kind of things then. Thank you. Yeah, you mentioned the Katusa not knowing about it uh, real quick. We did it. We have a, a, a twice a week uh, newsletter that we sent out. It's called Soldier Today. And we just did an article about a week or so ago about the Katusa program and mm -hmm. uh, sent it out. And some of the responses we got back from people out there who've never been to Korea had no idea what it was, thought it was very <laughs> interesting. So yeah. um, thank you all for your responses. Uh, we've got some questions. So I want to I wanna get to those and, and get your responses. So we have one here from a Mr. Beckman. He says, my first assignment in Korea was in 1972. That's quite a ways back. Oh, Has yeah. off-base living changed? Uh, and I'd say it's changed just a little bit. Um, well, Felicia, you, you're there now and you deal with families that are coming over there and some of them probably have to live off-base. Um, what, what, can you answer that question for him? Sure. So when I was, when we lived in Seoul, when we first got there in, in 2008, we were able to live on, you know, on the base there um, for about what, three, three years. And then um, I did, I was able to move down here to Humphreys 2011 and I lived off post. That was my first experience living off, off post. Yeah. Oscarville, if you remember where that is, out, out, out of the main gate. Um, it was a wonderful experience for my first time living off post there and then moved back to Seoul. But that time I lived by some Gaki Station, if you can remember where that is, mm -hmm. right up by the War Museum. Um, so it, it has changed quite a bit, but um, and, it, and it's changing as we're, as, we're yet spe as we're speaking right now. I mean, Seoul is, is a major, major city. So even though pretty much military is trans, trans you know, we moved down here. Seoul is a major city, and it's Seoul, as we say, is always going to be Seoul. Here in Humphreys, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, I can say, like a breakneck speed. It's, it's totally different from nine years ago, because again, like I said, I was here nine years ago. I mean, the apartment, built, what was woods and trees are now like buildings and houses, and um, yeah, and then you have Samsung. They have like major factories up the street. You wouldn't even recognize it. it almost, it's almost like a real big city. And the many people say, oh, it's a rural town, and it's still kind of rural when you compare it to Seoul. But it's, it's, it's constantly, it's like ever-changing. Each day it's changing. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that, too. A lot of apartment buildings going up around in Piontech that weren't there before. So no. I, I, I think in a few years, uh, uh, Piontech will, will grow. And, and I don't think it, it'd be a while before it ever gets to, to a city like Seoul. But talking with the leadership while I was there, they've done great strides in making in improving yes. uh, off-base living, especially there, Mr. Beckham, since 1972. So mm -hmm. um, I, I would say it's changed drastically. Mm -hmm. uh, Korea is an assignment of choice. I've served as a cap, served at camp. This is from uh, Mr. Hines. I served at Camp Hobie and Suwon Air Base. I'm a I'm a bit biased as my grandmother is Korean. I like to sage advice, give and take risk, get explored. And he asked the question, how can I assist this organization from stateside? So I'll answer that question. Uh, Mr. Hines, you can uh, send an email to, con and for everybody out there, contact 
at kdva.net and you can get involved. Uh, he also asked a question. Uh, well, let me make sure it's a question. Hold on. Uh, no, he just made another comment. He said, active duty has to get involved with boss and connect with Katusa friends. NCOs can lead this charge and participate with soldiers. Well, I think boss is still pretty active over there. Um, uh, and still being assigned. Well, Mr. Kim, um, are you familiar with the boss program in Korea? I don't know exactly what it is. Better opportunity for single soldiers? Oh, yes, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Felicia, it, it's still pretty active over there, isn't it? Uh, we're yeah, so it is. And, I mean, in, 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 and personally, I think there's uh, you know very good relationship between U.S. soldiers and the Kedusas. If they, right. they become very good friends of, of them, then you know, they, can, they invite them in, in, at his house or at his, uh, you know, gathering together with the families. Mm -hmm. But on, 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 beside of that, actually, would we promote them maybe during the vacation period, we just invite, I mean, try to organize, you know, the, the former Katusas, you know, who has, who can afford to accommodate them into the, uh, you know, like in, you know, the, the, the resort area, whatever. Uh, they can invite them. We, we, we try to develop this kind of program, you know, for, for, for them. Uh, Joe, it's, you... it's actually ongoing, ongoing program. I'm sorry? It is ongoing program. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Invite all the uh, I, I believe it is too. I mean, there was a big boss thing over there when they had the whole big celebration for uh, 75th anniversary and boss had a booth out there. So I, I know it's alive and well. Um, Joe, when you were over there, uh, I know NCOA did a lot of things with, with boss and uh, were active duty, uh, um, like married folks and all that, were they getting involved with, uh, with the boss program at all when you were there? Yes. Is it own boss more? Through boss, FMWR, I, you know, I would recommend again, the uh, boss programs, getting linked up with the Katusas, uh, joining or at least working with organizations like NCOA, AUSA, KDBA, BFW, you get involved in those associations because they all work together as a team to, to again, enhance the quality of life that the, that the bases already have in place. And they, those organizations, those private organizations are very key. And, and in most cases, you don't really have to be a member of the organization to join in on their programs. I mean, we we had so many family members and, and, um, and and individuals involved in, in NCOA when we were there, and they were they were not necessarily members. I was even trying to give a voice to some of them, and I found out I'm not even a member. So I made them. I said, "Well, I can't believe you've been working. I mean, been going with us on these different trips and different, uh, you know, activities in in the in the, in the community." He said, "No, I just enjoy you know doing these things." And I think I think that's another outlet for our, our service members as well as for our family members there. And uh, we had a really close bond with the Katusas. We we actually had what we call an English camp with a school right outside the uh, the, uh, the the gate, the Boson High School and Middle School. And the Katusas, we had a program which it was it was the Katusas would explain to our service members what the Korean holidays were about, as an example. Sure. And we would in turn explain to the the Korean students and others. What what the American holidays were, so we could kind of you know exchange a culture. So more so than an English exchange, it was a cultural exchange, and I think that also helps a lot that you learn about you know where you are. Uh, one of the things I did when I was on active duty is I would task the service members that came on to, to my uh, division to read a book, and, and and I don't know the author, but it's called and I may have this backwards, but it's Ugly Korean, Ugly American. This book, if you read it, it gives you the cultures, differences between the United States and Korea. Why they do certain things, why we do certain things, you know, why they bow and shake hands the way they do, and why we do certain things that we do. And I wanted, I wanted the service members to get an appreciation, a little appreciation, just a bit, on the culture, because I, I really truly believe that, that also makes a difference. And, and I think that's made a big difference. Uh, what makes a big difference in the in the uh, in what we have as far as camaraderie and, and the teamwork that we have there in South Korea and the United States is through Korea. Yeah. Uh, when I was over there and, and going about and, and visiting 
soldiers like up in 2ID or the second brigades or down 19th. Um, I would always ask the soldiers about what they, how they enjoy uh, being in Korea and not just specifically from a cultural or, or, or entertainment side, but from a work side, you know, um, and, and what they all told me was here in Korea, we actually get to do our job, right? So we're, we're training in our job, we're working hard in our job, and especially for, uh, for, for somebody who's like on their second tour, who may have been in an area where, where, you know, he was out of his MOS or she was out of her MOS and weren't really able to focus, but get to Korea and they get to train on the equipment that they're going to use and all that. Um, so I, I, I would say, so one of the questions is, is was there anything different about training and, and working in Korea? Well, I found it to be yes. Um, but Lieutenant Rue, so, so you was over there as, a, as an NCO um, and how, how does training in Korea compare to be to training in, in, in the other air base? Sure. So my previous experience, I just want to apologize. I got a fussy baby in the background if that's coming up on the audio. Um, but so the, the joy of an Intel assignment is that every Intel assignment is different. Um, so I had worked um, aircraft support before, before coming to Korea. Um, and besides, you know, prepping our air crews and, and training uh, for what they could face as far as enemy threats while, you know, the air crew was out, um, we never got to um, be immersed in that. Um, we were stateside. I was in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and so we would brief our air crews and then they would go do support. They would do the mission while we were just support. And all of that changed when I got to Korea. Um, I was on the U.S. Forces Korea Combined Forces Command Joint Watch Floor. Um, and so that was the mission. Intel, you know, was the mission. We got to see it and do it every single day. Um, and so while I can't get into too many details of what I did on the floor um, of the watch floor there in Korea, but what I will tell you is that it was very rewarding um, to not only just be in that preparation mode. We were there. Um, we were there for every missile launch. Anytime there was a North Korean provocation, I got to see it. And, uh, you know, we got to live and breathe, you know, this is actually happening right now. And this is how my job matters right now at this moment, um, which was very, very rewarding. We don't always, as an Intel officer and as an Intel analyst, you don't always get that instant gratification, um, but we definitely got that there in Korea. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I, I know we're about to run out of time. I'm, I'm probably gonna get the hook from, uh, from Colonel Lee here pretty soon. Um, <laughs> But, but I wanted to share one quick story with you. And it was all about perception uh, uh, of, of Korea. I think Joe touched on Well, everybody touched on it a little bit. Um, so I was having a little bit of trouble getting Sergeant Major to come to Korea. Big surprise there. Um, so I, I had a, uh, I, we filmed a young Katusa soldier. And we filmed him uh, in spots all around Korea, different post camp stations. And he was kind of the narrator of it. And he was talking about his country and what it is about his country that he would welcome them to come and see. Now, I, I, will, I, will, I will preface this with a little bit. When, uh, when we're standing there, I was at the academy, the Sarge Major Academy, and I had the old class in front of me, and I said, how many here uh, would like to come to Korea? Not one hand. Not one. So we talked about it a little bit, and I showed the video. And I'm not exaggerating. There wasn't one hand. So we showed this video of this young soldier, this young Katusa soldier up there, talking about his home, his country. And we were going through, we were showing the city of Seoul and down in, uh, in, in Daegu and Pyeongchang, Camp Humphreys, all the different stations. And at the end of it, he said, so this is my country. Wouldn't you like to come and join me and see my country and be a station in Korea? It was a very powerful video and, and the young trooper did a wonderful job. So when that was all done, I said, so now, how many people would like to come to Korea? Now, I didn't get everybody, but I had probably a good three quarters of the SAR majors raising their hand. And when you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, it was because they, like I mentioned earlier, it was, I, I was thinking of Korea as a building no higher than two stories and dirt roads, and because that's the stories they've heard from their grandfather or great-grandfather or somebody who served in the Korean War. They had no idea. Now, these are Sergeant Major been their career for a long, long time. They, they just didn't have any idea. Um, and then you mentioned sponsorship. And, and I will 
tell you that we we set it up to where Joe was there. Um, we had people from housing and everybody there all in a BTC talking to the families and letting mm-hmm. them know what Korea was all about. So I think changing the, the, the perception of what Korea is is key. I agree with that. And, and I think the sponsorship piece is also key. Mm-hmm. Korea is an assignment of choice. And I'll be the first one to say that. I spent mm-hmm. five years there and I was deployed there 10 times back in the 80s for, uh, I mean, five times for, uh, for Teen Spirit. I loved it. It wasn't a hard sell for me. My wife, on the other hand, getting to there, but once she got there, she absolutely fell in love with it. Um, so I, I will tell you, it was it made that sponsorship and that experience a little bit easier for the family members to adjust. You know, they had a, they had a good idea of what was going to be there. So when they got on ground or got on the peninsula, it was a little bit easier for them to adjust to to to, to Korea. And I think that's key. Um, uh, I think the Rock U.S. Alliance is probably one of the strongest alliances I've served in. You know, Mr. Kim, you mentioned Germany. Um, I've served two tours over there. I've never had a relationship with another military than that we got what we had uh, with the Rock military. Um, and, and that's just a fact. It's probably one of the strongest alliances to, uh, around. Um, so I'm going to shoot one more question out there. Uh, what has been the most unexpected, pleasant surprise about being stationed in Korea? And um, Felicia, let's start off with you. And then I'm a, this will be my last question for our viewers, viewers out there, and we'll, and we'll close it out. But I think we're on something here, and I don't want to stop. Wow. For me, it's like I don't know where to start because I just had no idea. When I left, Virginia back in 2008, the original plan was to do two years and to go back home. And then I, I came here and again, just the partnerships were just, they were amazing, they have, and they're still, they still are amazing. Um, the successes, you know, I came in as a classroom teacher, had no idea that I would even be in the position that I'm in today, um, you know, in a leadership position now, you know, serving all the teachers here in our on the peninsula and the and the children and and community leaders had no idea that was going to happen, and that's a success. And then again, just my I, I call them my brothers and sisters, my Korean brothers and sisters. Just you know, um, the partnership there for us, you know, on the other side of my profession. You know, as you said earlier, you all read. I you know I'm a pastor with my husband. That's been phenomenal. Again, just had no idea that any of this would happen and it's still yet happening. It's really been a blessing and I don't regret coming. Um, it's, just, it's just been amazing. And so the successes, I'm like, wow, I'm just like, almost like sometimes get overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, I, t- I totally get it, I totally just, get it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just get overwhelmed and um, just the warmth and the love that we have received um, from the time we we landed here until right now this moment and even tomorrow it's just been truly a, a just amazing and a blessing and that's from the heart i mean my son went to school here from second grade all the way up and he how he does have something in common with miss anna he is at liberty and he did decide to do the air force stuff i'm so sorry <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> he's, he's the air force rossi kid but um it's just been amazing. It's just been success all around, and I'm very thankful. <laughs> well, the, the, the command is a lucky one to have you over there, So, uh, uh, and we thank you for everything that you do. Uh, Lieutenant you. Rue, what was the, the most unexpected and pleasant surprise for you as a young enlisted trooper, at, well, airman, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> uh, being assigned in Korea? I think the biggest uh, pleasant surprise for me, especially living in Seoul, was just the unlimited amount of opportunity um, to go explore, to adventure, just to go do and see whatever you want. It's got everything that any normal U.S. city has, um, but but then there's just that there's so much more. You know, it's you know it just the exploration of a new city in itself is fun, but then to be overseas um, and everything, everything feels new, everything feels different. So just that opportunity around every corner, um, no matter what you're looking for, restaurants, 
um, museums, you know, the whole, the Seoul River or the Han River, excuse me, it was probably one of my favorite things to go do. And every time we were down there, it was just seeing something new. So I loved it. Awesome. Thank you. No. Came to you. When you well, first so, uh, went to actually, Korea. you know, I guess from being there so long, I mean, I, when I first got, like I said, we, we wanted to go there, but I never would have thought, you know, 21 and a half years later, we'd be leaving Korea. I mean, it, maybe four years, but so it, it, I guess it just grew on me. I mean, and you mentioned Germany. I spent nine years in Germany. So Germany was like, that was my first duty station. So that was like home for me, I thought. But then going to Korea, and then it was hard to leave even after 21 years. We we had definitely thought long and hard about actually whether or not we were going to actually leave to come back to the United States. But with my daughter being here and, and with the job opportunity, we decided to come back. But it, it's just a lifelong experience that I've had that I've had there with, with the military, with, with the community, with everyone who's rotated in and out while I was there. I mean... I had service members that would, would leave, come back, and say, so major, are you still here? Yeah, I'm still here, and, you know, but the difference, and they say, how are you, how are you still here? So, so I guess in some respect, that could be good and bad. Are you still here? No. <laughs> I guess what kept me there really was, it's like the lieutenant mentioned, it says, things are forever evolving. So as people transition to come in, I was still there. So it was a continuity there with the unit. And then I would have a new experience in indoctrinating them or assisting in indoctrinating them from the officers to the service members uh, into that, you know, the military and what was going on with, with, our assignment, with their assignment, as well as what was going on with the community. So for me, it was ever, it was an ever growing experience. So when I finally got on that line and called DA and said, I'm really ready to retire, you know, I felt like I'd given enough in uniform to the to to my assignment to the military, but I knew that that I was going to stay there and 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 be able to uh, to to further enhance what I could do on the civilian side. So I definitely have some long, long, lifelong friends there, and I'm definitely looking forward to going back after this uh, COVID experience is over. So maybe next year or the year after, I'd like to go back to visit. Um, probably will not go back there to live, but who knows? Like I said, I never would have thought I would stay there 21 and a half years either, so you never know. <laughs> I, I will share with you that, that um, it was the overwhelming response of the Korean people um, and how they welcome um, and love the U.S., uh, uh, the service mm -hmm. members and their families. Um, yeah. It was, that that kind of took me back a little bit because Having been in Korea, not uh, in Germany, not not that the 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 German community wasn't you know didn't uh, enjoy being with the, the soldiers, but it was just night and day uh, of being in Korea, um, and it was folks like you, Mr. Kim, who who, de who 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 does that kind of stuff that make you feel welcome and appreciate what you do and appreciate your support of their country, and. Um, so that's a, it really made an enjoyable assignment for me um, and, and my wife. Uh, so uh, I, I, I would go back if I was still serving, I'd go back and I look forward to going back like you, like you, Joe, to, to visit again someday. Um, well, I, I, I've, I've, been, I've been given the hook to, to wrap it up. So, so I am going to do, I'm going to be a good moderator. Uh, well, maybe I'm not a very good moderator. We, we, we kind of went over here a little bit. <laughs> but I want to thank all of our, our first. You did a great job. <laughs> well, thank you. First and <laughs> foremost, to, to the panel members and, and, to, and to Colonel Lee, thank you so much, sir, for setting this up. And thank you all for taking your time to, to be on this panel and share your experiences. It's been, uh, I, I hope people watch this and they, and they learn a little bit more about Korea and, and can appreciate your experiences. Um, in KDVA, we really believe that people make a difference in the Rock U.S. Alliance and strengthen and the strength of our personal personal. Let me back up. I'm 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 I'm, I'm getting tongue tied here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you start talking a lot. <laughs> um, you know, the alliance and the strength of our personal uh, personnel uh, personal unbreakable bonds with Korea is what makes the alliance an alliance for the ages, and it is true. 
um, the bond there is unbreakable and I think it'll live long after, uh, after I'm gone. I'm thankful and so honored to be part of this. Um, again, thank you to all the panelists. I really appreciate your time. Um, please watch out for future KDVA webinars and events. If you'd like to add your voice in supporting the Alliance, please consider joining KDVA. It's free and will only take a few minutes at kdva.vet. Thank you and, uh, and God bless all of you and appreciate your time. Felisa, I know it's getting late back there for you, so I bid you a good evening. And uh, for those of you still in the States, enjoy your day. Uh, Joe, get back to work. And uh, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Colonel Lee for, for any closing remarks you may have. Well, uh, Sergeant Major, I tell you, this is, I think, uh, one of the funnest panels we've had and one of the more significant. Uh, I think we talked about uh, breaking down some of the misconceptions uh, about uh, Korea. Uh, realistically, great place to train, real world mission, and a world class country with uh, warm people, um, the heart of the Rocky West Alliance. So thank you again, Sergeant Major, wonderful job. And we look forward to seeing you at other uh, KDVA webinars and events in the future. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all take care. <laughs>